we now have a car that can drive itself. Kind of. It has a neural network for a brain and can make some decisions. Now, neural networks are often referred to as black boxes, meaning that it's hard for humans to straightforwardly understand what they're doing. So I'll teach you a way to visualize neural networks using colors, symbols, and animations to turn a bunch of raw numbers into this awesome thing. It's not the best possible visualization. I have other tricks I could show you someday. But it's the norm, so to speak. If you search the internet for neural network images, this is what you'll get. Anyway, it's infinitely better than debugging in the console. You'll see. It's best if you code along with me, so open the project, and if you want to have this exact version I'm using, then get it from GitHub. And let's turn the light inside of this black box and realize that there is no box. Get it? No? Because I have this series called No Black Box, where I... No, no! Gonna code, debug, and have fun. Coding with Radu. Coding with Radu. Gonna prototype and design. Coding with Radu. Coding with Radu. Let's code now. I'm gonna go to index.html here, and I'm actually gonna refactor things a bit. This my canvas from the beginning is gonna be called car canvas, like this. And we're gonna use another canvas on the right to display the network. So we're gonna visualize a neural network in this one. Now, let me save this and go to our CSS file and my canvas will be renamed to car canvas. And I'm going to copy this as network canvas. And to distinguish between them, let's make this background black. Like this. Now in main.js, I'm going to go here at the top and say that this, all we did so far is on the car canvas. And I'm actually gonna refactor everywhere it says canvas here by pressing right click rename symbol and saying here car canvas like this and this ctx is going to be renamed to car ctx like this and i'm gonna copy this part right here for the network canvas so here we have network canvas and network canvas and here also network canvas and I think this one can be a little bit wider let's see if we can fit 300 pixels wide canvas next to our car canvas from previously then here the car context is gonna need a network context next to it so network context coming from our network canvas, right? And one more thing we need to do here, when we make our car canvas have the same size as the screen vertically, I'm gonna do the same thing for our network canvas. Save the file, refresh the page, and we have our car on the left doing something, whatever it's doing. And every time we refresh, it's probably going to do something different. Probably not something smart. And on the right, we have a blank black canvas that also stretches quite nicely with the size of the screen. And what will be really great is if you can go here after drawing all the car related stuff and saying visualizer draw me a network on the network context and put there the car brain like this we will write this code for visualization in a new file so let's go to index.html and say here visualizer.js save this file and then create the file here visualizer.js and start to write our visualizer class 
In it, we'll have a static method called draw network on a context given a network. And I'm going to use a small margin to the sides. So let's say a margin of 50 pixels. And I'm going to define here some helper variables next. So one for the left equal to the margin, top also equal to the margin. And the width is going to be the width of this canvas minus the uh, twice the margin. And same goes for the height like this. So easy stuff. And here what I'm going to do is actually call a method to visualize a single level for now. And this is going to use the same context and the first level of the network there. And I'm just passing here left, top, the width and the height so that it knows where to put it exactly. And this is going to be useful afterwards because when we draw multiple levels, all the entire network, then uh, each of them will have some specific left, top, width and height. So making our draw level method next on a context, given a level and the left top width and a height like this, I'm going to define a few more helper variables. I'm going to say here right is equal to left plus the width like so and bottom is going to be top plus the height like so. And let's have here a size for our nodes. So there are going to be circles pretty much and I'm going to say here node radius is equal to 18. It's my lucky number. And then I'm going to loop through all the inputs first. And I'm going to figure out what is the X coordinate of each of these inputs. And this is really easy. We are just going to use our lerp function, our utility function from earlier doing linear interpolation. And we just set here a value between left and right and depending on the input's length. Remember, there was a problem here that if we divide by zero, we don't want that. So if we have our input's length of one, I'm just going to return here 0 0.5. Otherwise, I divided by inputs dot length minus one, like so. We did this previously, if you paid attention. And now I'm going to draw our circle using the arc method like this and fill it with white for now. And that's it pretty much. Let me save the file, refresh the page. And we have here at the bottom five dots, one for each of these five sensors here. And I'm going to do the same thing next for the outputs of the first level. But before that, I'm going to show you how to destructure this level elements like the inputs, outputs and so on, because here we are repeating this level everywhere and our code becomes harder to read because of it. So here at the top, we can say const inputs and outputs, for example, is equal to level. And what this means is that here we can just use inputs directly now. And our code is shorter and fits well in the screen. Now below here, I'm going to copy all of this and replace inputs with outputs. And bottom here, let's have it at the top save the file, refresh the page, and now we have the output layer of the first level of our network at the top of the screen here, like this. So this one had six neurons, if you remember, here inside of our car constructor, we said that the second node count is going to be a six. So this is the output layer node count of the first level and the input layer node count of the second level. 
let's do the connections next. Going back to the visualizer here and let's say for each input, so I'm going through all the inputs like this and for each output like so, I'm going to just draw a line between the input and the output nodes that we draw earlier. So let's begin a path and first move to the coordinate of the first input. So I'm going to say here, left, right, we need to stop this, right? I mean, look at this. We are repeating the same thing here. Let me just remove it already. And it repeats the same here and even up here. So this is the moment when you want to extract the helper method. All of these are getting the x value depending on the left, the right, and the index essentially. So I'm gonna go down here and say a new method, a private method, get node x. Given the nodes, the index, and the left and right boundaries. And this is going to just return lerp from left to right. And if the node's length is one, then this will be a 0 0.5. Otherwise, index divided by the node's length minus one. That's it. And now we can just go up here in our move to and say visualizer get node x given the inputs i left and right and the bottom is going to stay the bottom and now we have a line to get node x of the j output instead also from left to right and here we have the top like this i'm gonna set the line width of two and an orange stroke Broke. Close these, save the file, refresh the page, and now we have our connections there. But now our code can be even better. We can copy this part from here, like this, and go above here where we are writing essentially the same thing and paste it instead. And I'm gonna copy it again here where we have the output and here we're going to have the height output. Be careful here, this is i even though this one here is a j because here we have the pairwise connections. So saving the file and refreshing we get exactly the same result but our code is much much shorter and easier to read. I'm going to move these connections actually before drawing the nodes because I don't like to see those orange lines going above the white circles here. So if we draw the connections first, then the nodes are covering them nicely. And now we can start using colors here to draw each connection depending on its weight. So I'm going to remove this orange from here and instead I'm going to say RGBA, so red, green, blue, alpha. Alpha is for transparency. And here I'm going to concatenate some variables. So I will have capital R for red, then comma, then capital G for green, then comma, then capital B for blue, then comma, and then let's write this alpha for the opacity, like so. And the value that we are working with is actually the value from our weights of i and j, like this. So we need to actually destructure here weights to have easy access to it as well, like so. And with this value, I'm going to get the alpha component, the transparency, by just taking the absolute value of value. <laughs> so think about it. This value is between minus one and one. 
And those values close to zero are gonna have almost full transparency. So a value of zero means we can't see that connection at all. And we don't care if it's minus one or plus one when we display this intensity. But what we do care is when selecting the color, I'm using yellow for positive values and blue for negative values. So here our capital R is going to check if the value is less than zero, then it's gonna use zero. We don't want any red then. Otherwise, it's gonna be a maximum amount of red. And same goes for green. So green is gonna be just set to R. They will be joined together because red and green make yellow. And our blue value is gonna be pretty much the opposite. So saving the file, refreshing the page, and look at that, all our connections are there. And you can see here, for example, a very positive connection right here, next to one that is closer to zero because you see it more transparent than the other one. And here, for example, is a negative connection, but it's quite close to zero, next to one that is also negative, but much closer to minus one. So this is how we read this new diagram here. And next we're gonna move to the biases. So let's add them here in the destructuring step. And now we can access these biases as well. And I'm going to draw them where we are drawing the outputs here as a contour around the output. So I'm going to say begin path with uh, line width of two, and I will make an arc like this. And the stroke style is going to be, well, I don't want to repeat myself. The bias is also between minus one and one, like the weights. So same thing that we did here, it's time to extract it as a utility function. So I'm going to copy all of this code from here inside of utils at the bottom here for now. And I'm going to write a function called get RGBA of a value. And we don't need this line from here. We have the value already as a parameter. I'm going to indent these to the left like so. And instead of setting here a stroke style, I'm just going to return the RGBA value instead. So I'm going to save now the utils file and go back into our visualizer where we can remove this code from here, like so, and just pass in the stroke style our call to get RGBA using these weights of i and j as the value. And exactly the same thing below here. So get RGBA of the biases of i, like so, and CTX stroke so that we can actually see it. And now I save the file, refresh the page, and it's actually here, but not very visible because it touches these nodes. So I'm actually gonna make the nodes have a smaller radius, like 60% of the radius used to draw the biases, like this. And now when we refresh, we can see the bias here around. But now we get this bad effect here where the connections pass through the bias and connect to the node. So I'm gonna do a visual trick next. I'm actually going to copy all of this code, but before I draw the node in white, I'm going to draw it in black first with the full radius here. And I'm going to do the same for the outputs as well.
like this. And the bias is actually going to be halfway at 80%. And now what we have is this nice separation here between the node and the bias and the place where the connections apparently start. And I think it's really nice already, but I like it even more if I go here where we are drawing the biases and say ctx set line dash to 3, 3. And then we are gonna reset this line dash to an empty array. So this is going to draw a dashed line with three pixels of line and three pixels of spacing. Save the file, refresh the page, and you can see the biases now in a more interesting way. So this is now a bias that is very close to one. You can see it's very highlighted. And this one is close to negative one. This bias here is pretty much zero. Let's see if these are correct. So let's say console table car dot brain dot levels of zero. And our biases here show indeed a value that is quite close to zero here for the first one, quite close to negative one here for the second one, quite close to positive one here for this second last one. So we know that what we are drawing here matches the actual values. It's good to debug like this from time to time so that you don't have discrepancies between the actual values and what you're visualizing there. Small mistakes can creep in anytime. Now let's show actually the values for the input nodes and the output nodes as well. And it's really, really easy. We just go here for the outputs where we are using white color. And instead of that, we say get RGBA of the outputs of I, like this. And here we say get RGBA of the inputs of I, like so. And refresh and Okay, something happened, but uh, I would like to have more control to debug this. So I'm going to go back to our main JS and instead of having the car use its intelligence, we are going to set this to keys again. So the car still has a brain, but I am moving it with my keyboard like this. And you can see on the right that the input nodes on the left and on the right are turning on a little bit because these sensors here are sensing something. But if I'm gonna go closer and closer and closer to the edge, you can really see this happening now at the bottom. And the same thing happens on the right if I'm going with the right sensors, like so. And you can see there at the top of this level one, that these neurons are firing depending on what my car is seeing. And the ones that fire change depending on the input value from here and on the value of the weights. But this is just the first level here and it's time to draw the rest. So let's go here to our visualizer at the top and I'm just going to remove this code from here now. And to draw all of them, we need to know the height of each level. And that one we can get like this by just dividing the height by the number of levels that we have like this. And now what I'm going to do is go through each of the levels like this and define a helper variable here for the top part of each level. That's the one that changes. And this one is gonna be offset first by the top from here because we want to take this margin into consideration. And then we are going to use the lerp to interpolate between the 
height but minus the level height because we want the bottommost level to start at a y value that still can fit it in the screen and then to zero and here the same thing we always do define our t value for the interpolation and we make sure that we don't divide by zero here by specifying that we want it to be in the center if it's just one level that we need to draw so with this level top here i'm going to say draw level on the context and now i'm going to specify the height level from the for loop and here we need to say left and the top value that we just calculated and then the width and the level height as the height and i think that's pretty much it so save the file refresh the page and now we can see both our levels here which is quite nice and you can see now a lot of things firing over there but there is one problem that we need to fix we don't see the biases of this level and that's because we are drawing these levels bottom up so when we are drawing this bottom level it does display some biases there but then they become overdrawn so to speak by this level that just draws these as the input values so we are essentially drawing these in between layers twice and one of them doesn't have the biases because they're the inputs of each level so we need to draw this in reverse to get them to appear and i'm gonna do that by saying here that i starts at network levels dot length minus one i is going to be greater or equals to zero and i minus minus here i'm going to save this and refresh and you can see the biases on this layer and on this layer and let's see if this network fires for us something happens great but i want a really easy way to know which of these things is which one is going to be the forward one is going to be the reverse i think it's this one and i think this is left and right so i want to know that by looking at this and that's just no problem because we are designing these components ourselves so we have full freedom to make anything we want and i do encourage you to try to make your own components here even better than mine if you can so i'm gonna pass a final argument here to this draw level method for the output labels and i'm going to say that this is going to check first if i is going to be equal to network dot levels dot length minus one so in this case we are at the last level and then i'm going to pass here an array of symbols like this and i found these by just searching online for html arrows or something and here if it's not the last level i'm just going to pass an empty array so we don't display any labels for all the other nodes so let's add these output labels here as the last parameter and these are going to be in the output nodes somewhere here and if we do have an output label for the height output that we are currently drawing i'm going to say to begin a path and i'm going to draw some text here and i want to align it to center and vertically to middle it will have a black fill so i'm setting this to black and the stroke style to white i want to be able to see these arrows even if the node is on or off and if you don't do these kind of tricks then it won't be visible sometimes so let's add also a font size and font family here 
I found these values just by trial and error. I'm not going to experiment with them here with you guys. And we're going to fill the text using the output label of i, like this, at the x location and at the top, like so. Then with a very, very thin line width of 0 0.5, I'm going to stroke the text again at the same location, like this. And now I'm going to save the file and refresh the page and it looks horrible. And the reason for these weird symbols here is that my file doesn't use the proper encoding. These characters I added are not UTF-8 and we need something larger. You can change the encoding in Visual Studio Code like this, but if you're using something else, you have to figure out this part by yourself. And then refresh, you get something like this. And it's really nice already, but it's not perfect. You see, they are not vertically centered, even though we say in the code here that we want the baseline to be middle. And that's because each of these symbols is not perfectly centered in its definition. But that's okay. We can play around with these and I'm gonna add here plus node radius multiplied by 0.1. I've just found out that this fixes it. Save this, refresh, and now these arrows are perfectly centered inside of our output nodes. Now, if you want to get really crazy with your visualizations, you can try going here to the draw network method. And before you draw the level, you can set CTX set line dash to seven, three. I just like those values. So it's gonna be a line of seven pixels and the spacing of three. And we're gonna animate these dashes. So let's save this and go back to main.js and our animate function here actually uses a parameter of time. This actually is sent automatically by request animation frame in the callback. So we can use this time to offset the line dash like this network ctx dot line dash offset is equal to time. And when you refresh, you will see some crazy stuff happening. That's because this time is flowing too quickly. But you can slow it down by saying here divided by 50. And actually, this is quite the opposite of what I had in mind because this is a feed forward algorithm. And these lines are now traveling backwards. So you can put here minus time instead. And now the values are going forward as expected. And this actually wasn't intended that the biases are also rotating, but I think this is great. It's kind of like uh, gears set in motion. Now you may think that this is too much and I'm willing to agree, but it's cool. And I wanted you to know these tricks. Let's make the car do its own decisions again. So put here AI and refresh and refresh again. So all of these are turned on now. It's really clear. I don't have to explain what the output values mean. All of them are off, so that's why it's not moving. Now some crazy stuff happened. Let's see if by refreshing we get some more intelligent behavior. Okay, interesting. It took a while, but the car went forward and then when it sensed the other car in front of it, it turned a little bit and eventually stopped for some reason. Maybe this border here was too scary. This visualization is okay, but more things could be done to make it even easier to understand. 
For example, you could incorporate this multiplication when drawing the weights so that the intensities change depending on the input neuron values. Now, these biases, some people like to visualize the bias as a separate input node instead, a special one that is always one. Think about the formula and you'll see it's actually the same thing. Now, I'm not a fan of this method, but maybe you are, who knows? These are just things to help us understand better, and we all have our preferences. You can also try to use libraries to visualize these. There are many of them available in JavaScript, but I'm pretty sure none of them can be customized to the level we did this one here. I like this kind of freedom. Were you able to follow along? Then great. Please like this video if you learned something today, and share it with others so they can learn as well. And if you got stuck somewhere, comment below and I'll try to help. You can get today's code from GitHub, and the full code is actually already on my website. Check it out if you can't wait till the end of the course. See you guys.